I'm back from Cabo, and Magic Spoon is back as the sponsor of today's video to help me shed some of the empty calories I had while I was out of the country. Magic Spoon is healthy and delicious cereal that tastes way too good to be true. Zero grams of sugar, high in protein, low in carbs, and you can get $5 off your first order when you go over to magicspoon.com slash cowboys. Let me finish up my bowl here before we get going on today's video. A look at some potential Neville Gallimore replacements. Today's Dallas Cowboys report video is a look at some potential Neville Gallimore replacements. Now, I'm not trying to incite panic here. There's no new updates on the injury for Neville, Gall for Neville Gallimore. It is a d dislocated elbow. He suffered in week one of the preseason against the Cardinals on like his second snap or something. The reports right now is he's going to miss anywhere from four to eight weeks. Now, that's not the end of the world, but short-term injured reserve could be an option for Gallimore and the Cowboys. And given the not great play they've had on the defensive line, they should at least keep their eye open for a potential addition via free agency or the trade market. The hope, and I think still the expectation, frankly, is a breakout year for, Never, for Neville Gallimore this season. He showed a lot of flashes last year. Four tackles for loss, four quarterback hits. Felt like down the stretch last year, every game, he was making a splash play. Now, hope was in year two. Those become more consistent and more plentiful as well. But when you look at what the Cowboys have on the defensive line, as it relates to potential internal replacements, guys who can handle that pass-rushing focus three-technique role, Carlos Watkins, Brent Urban, not great group right there. I mean, in terms of pass rush, those guys are decent run stoppers. Frankly, your best healthy bet as it relates to a pass rushing force at defensive tackle is probably third round rookie Osa Odigizua. Now, Osa could benefit tremendously from Gallimore being out. He's also shown some flashes so far in the preseason. And if Gallimore does, which I assume, miss week one, given where they're at the defensive line, even if he's not the starter, Odigizua could play pretty close to starter snaps in that game. So what do you guys think? Should Osa start at defensive tackle for Dallas? Get your votes in. Why for yes, he should, or and for and no, you don't want him to be the starter on the defensive line. Now the other key cogs here worth mentioning, Carlos Watkins, He's never been a great pass rusher. Now, maybe he breaks out this year. I'd be a bit surprised by that. But between Gallimore's injury and Tristan Hill's, Watkins in better shape to make the roster. I do want to mention Tristan Hill here. Because had he been healthy, he would be benefiting from the injury as well. Unfortunately, he's still not healthy. And frankly, I don't know if he's going to be a full go in time for week one of the NFL season. I think there's a very real chance that Hill ends up starting the year on the NFI slash pup list. So Hill might not contribute right now. Of pup list, not the NFI, just the pup list. That leaves Galmore's out, Watkins, Brent Urban, Oso Digizua, Quinton Mohan as a run stopper. Maybe it helps Justin Hamilton make the roster, but it's not a splash player. That's like the back end of your roster who, frankly, I would love to upgrade from. So what do you guys think? Do the Cowboys need another defensive tackle? Get your votes in for me. One for yes, they do, or zero for no, they're not. About to break down some possible options in free agency and the trade market, but get your votes in right now. One for yes, zero for no. Geno Atkins, of course, right? He's first up here as it's a potential target for the Cowboys in free agency. The Cowboys team doctor performed his surgery. Atkins is coming off the injury, and no team truly will know more about the Cowboy about Atkins' injury than the doctor who performed it. They're going to trust him more than any other NFL team would. The issue is Atkins is not in his prime anymore. Yes, he was once an eight-time Pro Bowler and a two-time All-Pro, barely played last year, one tackle, and then 2019, he wasn't that great either. I'll also make note that reports are from the Dallas Morning News that the Cowboys haven't really shown much interest, and I, I, I understand that to an extent, and even if it's a short-term option with the way veteran contracts work, if they're on the roster for the first uh, first week or first day, 
their contract's fully guaranteed, so money might be an issue there. I would explore Atkins, though. I'd at least go, hey, how's the injury? How you feeling? Get him in for a workout. If he's not, if he's not healthy and good to go, then pass on him. Now, Kwan Short, next up here, very similar mold here of Geno Atkins. Once a really great player. He's played in five games in the past two seasons. That's it. He has three sacks in his past three years in total after he averaged over eight sacks from 2015 to 2017 with the Carolina Panthers. I say it partially jokingly, partially dead serious. No more injured Panthers defensive tackles. But again, yeah, you can see how the medical is, right? Now, you don't want past two years of Kwan Short. If you're getting a handful of games, what's the point? Now, in 2018, even though the sack numbers were low, the tackle for loss numbers were high. If you could promise me this version of Kwan Short, I'd say let's ride. I don't know how likely that is, though, as we sit right now. I got two more names I'm going to get to here as it relates to potential free agent options at defensive tackle. Of course, there are a whole lot more than just those two. So what I want you guys to do right now is give me a name. Name a defensive tackle you guys want to sign. As mentioned, today's show is made possible by our friends over at Magic Spoon. High protein cereal, 13 to 14 grams in every bowl. It's also profoundly low in carbs, only 4 grams of net carbs. And despite tasting like the sugary, delicious, teeth-rotting cereal we grew up with, it's actually no sugar. So it tastes like the stuff we all loved, and it's not going to give you a cavity this time around. So get $5 off your first order of a box, or maybe four or more, over at magicspoon.com slash cowboys. A link will be in the comment section and in the description. Next up is Jarrell Casey, a name we mentioned over a year ago on the Cowboys report when he was a free or when he's traded. The Titans gave him up, and I thought, wow, they got on him way too early. Ah, they might have looked really smart in hindsight there. They saved a ton of money, and Casey made no real impact last year again, coming off of injury. Atkins, Short, and Casey all fit the same mold. Yes, if healthy, if close to their best play, they can help you as a starting three technique on the defensive line. However, are you going to get that guy? I don't know. If you could give me 2019 Casey again, I say let's do it. If you want to wait a week and say let's see how the young guys perform with the preseason game this year and then make a call, okay, I get it. If you just want to kick the tires, okay. I just don't know if the old guys are really going to help you in the way that their name recognition might suggest. Of course, I have to mention Snacks, right? Damon Harrison. Now, he could help your run defense if, because he's, if he's in shape, of course. Help mentor Quinton Bahanna. The Cowboys showed no real interest last year, and Harrison doesn't actually help you with what you need right now. As weird as this sounds to say, given what we saw last year, you'll probably be okay as it relates to run stopping with Bohanna if he makes the roster, uh, Carlos Watkins, Brent Irvin. You can survive there. Where I'm most worried right now with Gallimore banged up is who's your pass rusher on the interior? Damon Harrison, at, in his best, in his best shape, in his best form, great run stopper. L lives up to the fatties only brand. But as a pass rusher, outside of pushing the pocket back, he just doesn't bring anything at this point in his career, there's not much left in the tank, I don't think, for Damon Harrison. Now, if the Cowboys make a move, I mean, you guys know we will break it down for you guys here. If you haven't already, hit the big red button and subscribe. The link is right there at the bottom of your screen. It's youtube.com slash Cowboys TV. Videos coming out every single day on America's team. Three trade ideas then, and these are all probably long shots, but their names worth discussing. First up is Rennell Wren, a former fourth-round pick out of Arizona State. Of the three guys we'll discuss here, the cheapest of the group. And the Bengals, by the way, have some real depth at defensive tackle. Wren, I wonder if he's a true roster lock. Now, he didn't play in 2020 due to a quad injury. 2019... And not much of an impact. 11 games, 8 tackles for loss. So in the event that my guess is correct, and he is on the roster bubble, given his athletic ability, given where he was drafted, the potential upside he might offer, 
get him for a late day three pick? It's worth a shot if you're the Cowboys. Now, I know the answer to this question is going to be Quinn and Williams. Not going to happen. I want it to. It's not. Don't, don't even think about it. So what I want you to do is keep it realistic here is name a defensive tackle who you want to trade for. Get your votes in for me right now down there in the comments section. Next up, a former first-round pick, Taven Bryan out of Florida. Now, there's some issues here that might be a total roadblock in this conversation. Number one, on the NFI list right now, allegedly might not have been in the best shape for the season. Big red flag right there, and if that makes you say pass, I get it. But I wanted to mention because I think he might be on the roster bubble with a new regime in charge in Jacksonville. The Cowboys would owe him under $1.9 million for just one year. It's not that bad. Now, Brian in 2019, his second year with, with the Jacks, showed the flashes of being, ooh, he could have a big-time breakout year in 2020. Small sample size, less than half a snap, still had five tackles for loss, two sacks. He got a big-time breakout year. And he got more reps last year and was worse across the board, which is a big problem when you're supposed to break out in year three and then the breakout doesn't happen. I think he'd be a decent scheme fit, but it'd only be for a late round pick. And I wonder, frankly, if maybe they just cut him all together. Next up is BJ Hill, a name that you true longtime watchers are quite familiar with, because I've mentioned him for over a year now. 2018 third round pick is a backup right now with the New York Giants. But when actually given a chance to play, he's been pretty damn productive. Now the Cowboys would have to owe him 2.18 million this year, which given the cap, you know, contingency that Stephen Jones loves to have, might be a bit much. But despite not playing that much, when he did play a lot in 2018, BJ Hill was really good. Six tackles for loss. 5.5 sacks. Is he going to be that caliber of player immediately for the Cowboys? No. But if you can get him for a late day three pick, if you can get him for, if you can get half of that production, a bunch of tackles, three tackles for loss, we'll say three sacks too, for a late day three pick, that would provide some added depth and value for the Cowboys on the defensive line. 